Welcome to Eco Ask Why, a podcast that dives into industrial manufacturing topics and spotlights the heroes that keep America running. I'm your host, Chris Granger, and on this podcast, we do not cover the latest features and benefits on products that come to market. Instead, we focus on advice and insight from the top minds of industry because people and ideas will be how America remains number one in manufacturing in the world. All right, welcome to this episode of Eco SY. Today we are digging into a fun topic, one that's generated a lot of buzz for us internally and, and externally as well, around how to read a one line, or you may want to call it a single line. That's part of the fun of the topic. So today we're, we're speaking with the author of the article, Mr. Jonathan Fuller, who is our automation and power product manager in South Carolina. Very excited to have Jonathan with us today. Jonathan, thank you so much for taking the time. So let's just start off with the burning question, the one that's got everybody fired up. Is it a one line or a single line? Hey, thanks, Chris. Happy to be here. Uh, So it can be both, really. Um, I would go by one line, but I have heard people call it a single line before. Uh, Most everybody I know in the engineering community, uh, they're going to refer to it as a one line. But either way, one line, single line, it they're both correct as long as uh, the people that you're talking with understand that you are actually talking about either a one line or a single line. I got you. I got you. I know there's some of our listeners that they may want to take this uh, discussion to the parking lot if it gets too serious. But in, in all in all seriousness, let's let's start at the very beginning. There are some people who may not even know what we're referring to when we say one line or single line. So can you give a, a basic general overview of what we're speaking of here? Yeah, sure. So uh, a one line is going to be a graphical representation. So something on paper uh, or, you know, on your computer screen, but it's going to be a graphical representation of the physical power layout that you have in your facility. Or, you know, it could even be your home, for example, but it's going to have a a line on there that's going to represent the power and it's going to have other symbols and uh, things on there that are going to represent things like your circuit breakers or fuses or relays and protective devices. But it, it's basically a graphical layout that kind of represents the physical layout that could be there in front of you. Very good. Good description. So let's let's pretend that this is the first time someone hands me a one line and it's in my hands. Where do I start? Uh, so... You know, if you're in front of a a certain piece of equipment uh, that you need to work on and that's why they handed you this one line, you know, I would start uh, and identify from the nameplate on that piece of equipment, you know, the name of it and and what you're looking at. And then you can find that on your your one line diagram that you have in front of you. Um, But, you know, typically you also could start in the top of the one line and work your way down. Uh, So the top of that one line is going to generally have your incoming power, whether it be from utility source or a generator or things like that. And it's going to work down the one line of the power architecture in your plant. So you're going to have like your main piece of switch gear, switchboard, and you're going to branch out from there and go to the different areas uh, within your facility that have the the gear in it. Um, But, you know, everything's going to be labeled on that one line with or it should be labeled on that one line with the names of the the piece of equipment. So you can also do it that way. Like if you know you're standing in front of MSB-1, you can look on that one line and and find it there. Uh, And then you'll be able to kind of trace upstream and and find what's protecting uh, or providing power to that piece of gear. Um, So that way you can safely open that breaker and, and do the lockout tagout procedure. Okay, I got you. So when you when you're handed that one line though for the first time, is there a legend or something on it to give you an idea of what the different symbols and things like that mean? Cuz I I know sometimes you you get them they're so complex, they're so convoluted. Uh it almost looks like you're walking into the pyramids, right? And you've got, you know, the 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 symbols all over the wall. Is there something to to kind of give us a okay, this means this when I'm looking at it? Yeah, absolutely. So any good one line should have a legend on it, similar to a map legend that you might see uh, on the map of the United States or your you know, home state, anything like that. Um, but it should be a box in one of the corners and it's going to have um, it's going to it should say, you know, one line legend and it's going to have symbols on there. Uh, the different squiggly lines or hieroglyphics, if you will. 
and it'll it'll have that graphical representation but then it'll also have the word next to it as you know this is a breaker this is a meter this is a relay uh, so that you can quickly identify all of those lines and symbols on your one line very good <clears throat> what about some the symbols when you think about and you're looking at and you're reading the legends what are some commonly misinterpreted symbols that uh users typically you know, could, could make the mistake with when they're when they're trying to interp- interpret the one line yeah so uh, some of the common mistakes that i i've made and i've seen are uh, some of the different kinds of breakers uh you know versus uh bolt on or or uh draw out breakers those are going to be different as well as uh you know a lot of them relays and motors and things like that tend to be a circle with a letter in it so if you don't pay close attention to what that letter is you might mistake a motor for a relay and, and vice versa okay so is there a bank of standards for this or is it you know dependent on the, the particular one line that you're evaluating at that time well so there's a couple of different standards there's no one universal standard i mean ieee has a standard as well as nema and iec uh, they all have their own kind of standards and symbols, and they vary from, uh, you know, standard to standard. So there's there's no general universal standard, but they're all pretty close. Okay, very good. Yeah, I noticed just in the his, history for me, a lot of times you see, you know, some pretty standard symbols, a circle being one of them, and that can mean many different things. Have you run across that before as well? Yeah, I have. I mean, it's it's like you said, most everything – um, you're going to have a circle with a with an R in it for a relay or a circle with an M in it for a motor. Um, you're going to have a, a line with a, a semicircle on it for a breaker in most all cases, whether it's NEMA or IEC. How about a, how about a draw-out type breaker? How was that typically uh, so represented? One of the, yeah, one of the first things that I ran into and, and got confused in early in my career was, you know, a, a bolt-on breaker versus a draw-out. And so they both have that, that same breaker symbol, but then the draw has some arrows on it at the top and bottom uh, that point away from the breaker. And, and I couldn't for the life of me figure out what that meant. Uh, and then I was able to understand that that is a symbol for a, a draw out breaker, like what you would have in a piece of switch gear. Ah, very good. Very good. So hopefully there's some, some good pointers there for our listeners on, on symbols and understanding common mistakes. Uh, we know uh, we're trying to help everyone e- elevate their education when it comes to one lines, so let's let's assume that we have a one line now in front of us. How do I know, Jonathan, that the information that I'm looking at is accurate? Well, there's no real way to know that. I mean, chances are, you know, 99% of the time, uh, you're going to get that one line when you get that new piece of equipment um, or you, you know, building your plant from scratch. And then over time, whether it be the electricians or the maintenance people or, you know, whomever, they're going to make changes to that equipment. Uh, as time goes on and they're not going to go back and update their one line either because they don't know that there is a one line or they don't know how, or they just don't think about doing something like that. So you could have, you know, a, an 800 amp breaker that's shown on your one line. That's now a 1200 amp breaker. You could have a breaker on your one line. That's not there anymore. You've taken it out of service or, you know, vice versa. You could have put a breaker into service. That's not on your one line. So really the only way to positively tell that, would be to have your one line physically in front of you and then be standing in front of the piece of equipment. And you're going to have to do a, you know, a compare between the two. You're going to have to look at that piece of equipment and say, okay, you know, here's, here's my 800 amp breaker. Yep. Here it is on my one line. Um, so you're going to have to do a physical inspection. Right. To, to, to really get actually, you, you got to get out in front of your equipment. So let's go to the other extreme. Okay. Let's, let's imagine that we're a, a user or owner of equipment, and we don't have a one line, and we really want to get one. What does that process look like to get us started? Uh, you know, so typically I would recommend, you know, if you've got different areas in the plant and you're responsible for a certain area, that's going to be the area that you're most comfortable with. Um, so, you know, you can start with a piece of paper, or, you know, even a napkin and a pen, and just start kind of drawing it out. So, you know, I would if I had a panel board in front of me, I would sit there and draw a box and then just draw symbols in there for every single breaker that's in it. Um, and then you're going to kind of go upstream and downstream until you just can't go anymore. Um, and then you can get with your colleagues in other areas and kind of combine all of those into one large one line for the whole facility. Um, but if you're responsible for doing the whole one line for your facility by yourself, um, it, 
I think it would be easier for you to start, you know, where power comes in, where's that pad mount transformer outside or where's that generator outside and kind of trace it downstream from there um, and find that piece of large, you know, distribution equipment that provides different power to throughout your facility and just kind of trace it down that way until you can't go any lower. Uh, You know, once you get to your motors or once you get to your drives and different one lines go to different depths. I mean, some, I've seen only go down to the panel boards, the lighting panel board, or only go down to the mechanical panel boards that feed things. And I've seen others that go all the way down to the motor, including the drives and starters. So it really just depends on how in depth uh, you need to make it for your own application. So does that process typically start with a a pen and a pad and and taking a a walk around a facility, just doing a basic drawing uh, with, with, with what you see is that typically what you would would recommend uh you know everybody kind of does things differently i that's the way i would do it and that i would recommend is is that pen and paper and kind of go and and draw it out and you can make changes right there as you need to um before you actually make it permanent um there's also software out there uh, cad software and things like that that you can use to to draw this in um, but if it were me, I would definitely do, you know, handwrite a copy of it and then bring that to my computer and sit down with all the information at once and draw out, uh, my one line in my software and then save it. And then that way in the future, when you make changes to that one line, you can open up that software and, and make changes there and then print a new copy of it. Good point. Are there any, you know, software platforms that, that you've worked with in the past that you enjoy or you, you find have good, maybe pre pre-done drawings and things like that that you would refer to our listeners? Um, so the one that I use almost all the time was just AutoCAD with some uh, built-in symbols in it. That, that's how I did most all of my one lines. Um, I know there's some tools out there that people use for art flash studies and things like that, like SKM and, and tools like that. Um, but I'm most comfortable and most familiar just with AutoCAD. Very good. Very good. We're just trying to help. So, Eco asks why. We really want to dig into the why behind things to, to give a deeper meaning and purpose. So let's just get right to it. Why should an end user care if they have a one line or not? Well, I mean, that's the, the easiest and safest way to ensure, um, you know, if I need to go work on this piece of equipment, um, you know, I can turn I can turn it off right there at the source. But then if I've got my one line, I can trace things upstream and make sure that I'm opening that breaker, pulling out that fuse upstream, and then doing the lockout tagout procedure so that somebody doesn't come along and and reclose that breaker or turn the device back on. And that could cause some serious consequences downstream on the piece of equipment I'm working on. But then also, I can also see what's downstream and what I might affect downstream in the plant. Um, So I make sure I don't turn something off that could cause issues in a process. Absolutely. So it, it kind of sounds a couple fold there from an operational standpoint. It gives you a good ability to understand what you potentially could be impacting, you know, from the decisions you're making. And then also from a safety standpoint, if, if I'm the, the technician that's responsible for, for working on equipment, or maybe you're bringing in some groups that are doing preventative maintenance on, on breakers or motors or what have you, you definitely want to make sure that, you know, you have, everything downstream uh, cut off and a one line sounds like a great place to verify all that information. Absolutely. <clears throat> Very good. So, so let's, in, in closing here, we, we, we really try to on eco SY to help our users and the listeners in their development and their personal careers and, and how they're, how they're growing as individuals. So pretend that you're that new engineer right out of school or you're that ENI technician you're that uh, electrician working in a plant right now, the, the heroes of industry that, that we love and, the, and the, the whole point of why we're doing this. And you want to give us some advice and, and to help them increase their experience uh, and, and to be comfortable with a one line that's put in front of them. Where could they go? What should they do? What, what, what's out there that, that they could invest their time to just increase their skill set in this area? Yeah. So, I mean, when I was a new engineer, just starting out, um, you know, there's obviously now with the age of the internet, you can find all sorts of information out there, some great information and learning guides. Um, But when I was an engineer first starting out, you know, I had a mentor. Uh, His name was Robert. And so we took a a piece of 
gear and a one line that we knew was accurate and correct for that piece of gear. And I just asked him, I said, Robert, can you spend a little bit of time with me? And so he and I sat down and kind of went through it and went over it and he helped show me what some of the stuff was. And, you know, I didn't learn everything from him right then and there. I picked up things as I continued on in my career, but, um, you know, having a mentor is huge, but, you know, if you're at a facility and, and it's all on you and there really isn't a mentor, then that's why, you know, we're here at Eco. That's one of the things we can help with as, as well as, you know, the internet nowadays. So you can find a lot of good resources out there. Good point. Good point. I love the, I love the fact that you brought up the mentor. That's so important. And our listeners out there, they're, they, they, they're across a, a, a big demographic. So maybe you're the, the individual that's looking for a mentor or maybe you're the person that could be a great mentor for that that young up and comer. So we we want to encourage both of you, uh, or both sets to 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 be there and to reach out. There's just a ton of knowledge out there, and and, and transferring it down to importance. So Jonathan, thank you so much for your time, your insight. You wrote a great article. It's caused a lot of buzz. Looking forward to the next uh, article that comes out from you. Uh, so just uh, great job on that again and thank you for your time today yeah absolutely thanks for having me I enjoyed it thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why this show is supported ad free by Electrical Equipment Company Eco is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit EcoSY.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y.com.